Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Good afternoon. I'm from Seoul National University Department of Nutrition. My name is Jung An Lee. I would like to thank the organizers of GBCC 2022 for inviting me as a speaker. Today, I would like to talk about the diet for breast cancer survivors. When we conduct research, uh, there are two types. One is on prevention, so uh, pre diet to prevent uh, breast cancer. And then another topic of our study will be a diet after breast cancer. So the diet for preventing breast cancer has been researched thoroughly. So what should we eat in order to not develop breast cancer. That has been investigated very much. But as to how to increase the quality of life of, based on diet after breast cancer treatment, we do not have enough research. So we are anticipating data from such type of uh, research and hope that we will have active research on this topic in Korea as well. So. The guidelines for breast cancer survivors are quite short. If you look at the guidelines for preventing breast cancer, there are five, six, seven, ten guidelines. But as for the guidelines for breast cancer survivors, there are only three topics. And what they say is they simply say follow the cancer prevention guidelines. But in reality, it could be different for uh, breast cancer survivors. But at any event, the current guidelines recommend maintaining a healthy weight and being physically active and eating a healthy diet. These are quite established among breast cancer survivors. So maintaining health weight, being physically active, these uh, lead to good prognosis. And as for the diet, I believe that the healthy diet has the highest level of evidence. I wish that we would have more detailed de uh, study, but there are only information about the dietary pattern and not enough granularity in the information that is provided regarding healthy diet. They simply recommend healthy diet pattern, but define healthy dietary patterns. So it will be maintaining a dietary pattern, including more vegetables, fruits, whole grains, poultry, fish, and less of the refined grain, high fat food, processed meat, and red meat. That is all the advice that they provide in the guidelines. So I would like to dig deeper in regarding this topic and actually share with you more practical tips about a healthy diet. So we cannot leave out maintaining healthy weight regarding healthy diet because it's all about calorie intake and calorie output. So it's always in and out. You it, you take or consume calorie and you would uh, have spent those calories via exercise. Now BMI, the body mass index, is one of the indicators for maintaining healthy weight. And it is weight in kg divided by height in square meters. So there are calculators in Google and other websites. So if you are obese, based on BMI, you will need to work on reducing your weight. And you have to reduce your food intake as well as working out. And also fat is high in calories, which means that you need to reduce the amount of fat. And also sugar is everywhere. So sometimes you would have sugar intake without realizing it. And one important factor is to record what you eat daily. Sometimes you might see a TV show with informative information about a healthy diet and you would take notes. But rather than taking notes from a TV show, uh, making record of your uh, what you have eaten that day on piece of paper is more important. If not, there are many applications these days. You can uh, there are some built-in or embedded apps if you purchase Galaxy phone by Samsung or iPhone. And there are many websites where you can calculate the calories or the nutrients of different types of food. 
Now, this is a Korean government agency website. There are many other, but this is one example. And they don't talk about the trace nutrients, but they divide the different types of uh, nutrients into fat and protein and sugar. So maybe after the end of the day, you can go into this website and enter what you have eaten that day, and then it would calculate the calorie intake for you. Then uh, you also enter your gender, your height, your weight your age. Then uh, they tell you uh, your total calorie intake versus the recommended calorie intake, for example, 70 percent. So they have t carbohydrates and proteins. And in this example, the, the carbohydrates should be about 25 percent, but this uh, person had 55 percent of carbohydrate. Then you know that you overate in terms of carbohydrate. So it will be difficult for you to do it every day, but maybe from time to time, every other day or every interval, if you calculate the calorie intake, then it gives you an idea of your dietary pattern. So your total energy intake, it says here, is lower than the reference nutrient intake. But in order to reduce your weight, it's okay to have 74% of the recommended uh, calorie intake. That will be fine. So you can make that judgment call. And also, if you look at the energy composition analysis, you can tell that you had uh, intake of very excessive percentage of carbs. Now these, I see many patients and their actual diet, and sometimes uh, patients overeat nuts because, of course, nuts are, in fact, very good for you. It prevents diabetes, and also it can help prevent certain types of cancer and is one of the uh, food types in a healthy diet. But one caveat is that nuts are high in calories. So in this bowl, there's about a handful of almonds, and that is 100 kilocalories. So if you eat triple the amount, it means that you have 300 kilocalorie intake. So that will be about half of the calories you would consume in, in a meal. But usually, you would eat these nuts as snacks in addition to your three square meals. So it is recommended that you uh, consume nuts, but you need to consider the calorie. So watch out how much nuts you eat. So if you were thinking of eating three handfuls, um, th change your mind and just eat one handful. And some patients uh, took wild perilla seed power. Uh, they would uh, make it into a drink and take that. But the wild perilla seed powder is very high in calorie as well. So even if the, the food is healthy food, if you uh, consume a large amount, in high calories, then it will lead to weight gain. Now, this is an older patient, and so the estimated energy required is quite low, and she took 135% versus the necessary energy, and she ate a lot of yogurts, and so that has led to a surge in her calorie intake. But in her meals, she didn't eat high-calorie foods, but she had 135 percent of the required energy because she ate a lot of nuts. So it is helpful if you keep a record of what you ate that day, and that will inform you why you had excessive calorie intake. So uh, you will notice I should cut back on the amount of nuts I eat. And as for saturated fat, it is known to be a bad fat. It can lead to cardiovascular diseases, hyperlipidemia, and in some type of cancer, it might be harmful. And actually, we ha there aren't any evidences that support uh, the tumorigenetic feature of nuts, but you have to reduce your, the nuts that you eat in order to maintain a dietary uh, healthy diet. And on the left-hand side, the 
calorie intake is similar to the right hand side, but the, on the left hand side, the patient had 6.3% of the total calories uh, being saturated fat. Maybe she had ate out, and so she had very light breakfast. And maybe it was a day for her with uh, to have chickens and beer with her friends. So her, but this type of diet will lead to 6.3 percent of the saturated fats. If you look at look at the uh, right hand side, it is about 5.4 percent. So it's a very balanced uh, diet in terms of nutrient. Then you might think you can't maintain this diet forever. But there are some cheating days where you would eat chickens, but it shouldn't be every day. So your usual uh, intake of saturated fat should be less than 7%. So there could be some ups and downs and fluctuations. Some days you would have 8%, other days 6%, 5%. But overall, you should maintain an average of 7%. So if you look at the case on the right hand side, it's a very balanced diet with diverse types of nutrients and food, which is uh, desirable. Here, this is a case where there was high intake of saturated fat, at sweet and sour pork, which uh, this person ate in large amounts. So it was 17 grams of saturated fat. But here it says, according to the Korean Nutritional Guideline, saturated fat should account for 7% or less of the total calorie intake. So I'm not criticizing the fact that she ate sweet and sour pork, but uh, this should not happen frequently. So on average, it should be on a level of 7% regarding the saturated fat intake. Now, sugars are important. There are a lot of beverages that are sweetened. Sweetens are uh, dangerous in a lot of sense because you would have uh, intake of sugar without realizing it. There are soda and sweetened yogurt and sweetened milk and sweet breads. And if you look at the K and Haynes data, coffee and soda uh, uh, consists of a large amount of sugar, and we don't have additive information. So the natural sugar is not included in the total sugar, but I'm not saying that is bad. So sugar will uh, lead to a surge in your uh, glucose sugar. And in the case of Koreans, uh, the sugars should be about 10 to 20 percent of the total energy intake. And as for added sugar, there are a lot of added sugar in places you don't know about. For example, beverages, even if you don't add syrups, there is already added sugar in that f beverage. In the case of processed food, that is especially true. The food maker has already uh, put added sugar in many snacks and crackers. There are a lot of added sugar uh, contained already at the factory. So we don't have a lot of uh, information. We don't have a database about sugar. But you should be cautious and watch out how much sugar you eat. And if you eat sugar, it will destroy all of the dietary fiber. And dietary fiber presents the ele escalate elevation of your blood sugar. And we need to have more research regarding as to whether uh, dietary fibers are helpful to breast cancer survivors. But if you blend all the fruit and take it as a juice, it will be better advised, it will be more advisable for you to eat the fruit as fresh fruit rather than blending it into uh, uh, fruit juice. And so once again, I would like to emphasize uh, your sugar intake. If you want to find out how much sugar content is included in the food, you can visit this website. It's a website where different government ministries are contributing, and they're updating this database on a continuous basis. So if you visit this website, you can see the content of sugar in the food. Uh, for example, in the case of bubble black sugar latte, even the name itself can tells you that there will be a lot of sugar inside. If you consume 370 milliliters of this beverage, here there's a list of how much sugar you'll be consuming. So 
I can't really see uh, this slide. Now here it's a honey butter chip, and it, there was more of uh, saturated fat, more than I had expected. Now honey butter chip, one serving is 30 gram, but actual serving size is 60 gram or 120 grams. So what this means is that you have to multiply or enter 60 grams if you ate all of the chip bag and then it is 60 grams and then you that will tell you the uh, calories this is mango yogurt it is a drinkable yogurt and it is 280 ml but one serving size is 80 ml so if you drink the whole bottle you will be consuming 280 ml so enter 280 and then the list will show you the different types of nutrient content and the sugar content is quite high it is actually very high so if you drink one glass of bubble black sugar latte the sugar is 39 grams so if you multiply 39 grams by 4 kilocalorie per gram then it's 156 kilocalorie and so it, if you divide it by the reference nutrient intake for the day your total calorie intake or 59% of your total calorie intake will be sugar and also honey butter chip 60 grams if you eat the whole bag it means that you should eat less fat uh, in other meals because you might go over the recommended percentage of fat rate of fat. The same applies to mango yogurt. There are a lot of added sugar contained. So 19 grams multiplied by 4 kilocalorie per gram is 76 kilocalorie. Divide that by the reference daily intake and that will be 68 percent. So it is highly likely that the drink you take is uh, has very high content of sugar. So always make sure you check the sugar content. And a lot of the breast cancer survivors are interested in calcium and vitamin D. The calcium is a nutrient which is very uh, insufficient in Korean cuisine. And so if you eat from natural food, you might not meet the reference uh, intake. So dark green vegetables are high in calcium and also beans and as you already know, uh, dried anchovies are recommended. They are helpful. But if you actually measure the calcium intake and you find that it, it, it hovers under the reference intake, you should take calcium supplements. And also vitamin D is one of the nutrients which is difficult to uh, intake via natural food. And so you should engage in outdoor activities for vitamin D synthesis by getting sunlight, but there is so much outdoor activities you can do. So then you can take vitamin D supplements. And it is high in homeostasis, and so you have to calculate based on the intake. Vitamin D is not contained in food, so you should measure that uh, via a blood test. You should go to a doctor's office, and then you can check how much vitamin D you need via supplement. So let's say you took the supplements, and but you, let's say you take combined vitamins, and then you take a fixed dose combination of calcium and vitamin D separately, and this uh, patient uh, takes uh, vitamin D and calcium very close to the intake ceiling, which means that there could be crystallization or the lumping of the calcium. So you should take less than the uh, intake ceiling. But here, once, uh, 1,755 is the total intake of calcium in this case, which is too high. So please do check uh, and do some math when you take supplements, because sometimes you might go over the limit in some cases. And the intake limit, you can find that information in many websites. Of course, there are some nutrients without that information, but most of the nutrients you're interested in will have the intake limit information on the websites. And please do make sure you don't go over the limit. Next is meat. Uh, you don't really need to completely stay away from meat, but 
in the case of U.S., they recommend to eat meat not more than three to four times per week. But from the Korean standard, three to four times of meat per week is quite a frequent. And also, as for the modality, try steaming or boiling rather than frying and try to ab avoid uh, barbecues. It removes, uh, removes a lot of the oil and greasy components. And also, if possible, try to eat white meat, let's say chicken. And I'd like to talk about the health of your daughters. The, I mentioned there are a lot of studies on uh, prophylactic diet, but back in the 19, early 1980s, uh, the study started but it, the conclusion was that there was no relationship whatsoever regarding uh, middle-aged women. Red meat, dietary fiber, processed food, uh, none of these foods uh, were related to uh, the prophylaxis or prevention of breast cancer in middle-aged women. So many of the scientists were surprised. Korea has a has achieved very fast industrialization. So how can breast cancer not be related to uh, food? So the scientists started thinking, and what they found is that what you ate during your adolescence makes all the difference. But it was difficult to conduct studies regarding this topic because uh, it was difficult to conduct a study among adolescents. But they started this research in 1990s. So in the case of nurse study, uh, they would recruit the daughter of the nurse. And in Denmark, there is high prevalence of Denmark, one of the highest prevalence of breast cancer in the world. And so they started researching young women. And surprisingly, we see that it's, the studies are positive because even if you take red meat or dietary fiber or fruits during adolescence, it leads to prevention of breast cancer at a later stage in life. So what you middle-aged women eat does not matter, make a difference. But your nutrition status during your adolescence uh, has an impact on the breast cancer development risk. So who are important? Young people, young adolescents are important. And what they eat is, uh, defines them. So what they eat during the adolescence is, uh, will determine whether they will develop breast cancer at a later stage in life or not. So. You are what you eat during your adolescence. Now, alcohol drinking. Now, that is harmful even if you drink it during your middle age. Uh, during your middle age, the more you drink, the more, the higher the risk of developing breast cancer. So this is summary. So it's good that you take notes uh, when you watch uh, TV shows on healthy diets, but. Before that, please make record of what you eat every day because that tells you your total calorie intake and what food you should eat more, what food you should eat less. There are a lot of websites which are very accessible and so you can find information there. And you should eat a very diverse uh, diet because it's, but a lot of these breast cancer survivors sigh when they hear this advice because it's very difficult to prepare food. Even one menu is difficult, one dish is difficult to prepare. So in that case, you should purchase uh, the ready-made meals. Uh, and these meals are, they come in sterilized uh, vacuum packages. Sometimes the friends might uh, propose uh, buying some food for them, but don't uh, use a delivery app. But you should tell your friends, can you buy me this ready-made meal, such as the chicken soup, which are healthy, and try to incorporate as much diversity as possible in your dietary pattern. And don't eat too much salt or too much sugar but you could dilute the soup, for example, if it's too salty, by adding more water. And you should do a little bit of cooking yourself as well. So try to eat as diversely as possible and uh, f refrain from overeating. Also, 
be careful of sweetened beverages and check the labels before you eat the food. And it varies by person. Some people, some person eat too much saturated fat. Some people have too much total calorie intake. So it differs by person. And so you should get personalized counseling. And also you should pay attention to what your daughter is eating.